This is Dennis McMahon, and welcome to Positively Vermont. Today, we're going to be exploring the Essex Junction train hop and tree lighting, a very interesting uh, event that's taking place in Essex Junction, Vermont. And with us to discuss it is Darby Mayville, uh, the Community Relations and Economic Development Assistant for the village of Essex Junction. Welcome, Darby. Thank you for having me. And Kirsten Santor, the Program Director and Community Relations Person from the Essex Junction Recreation and Parks Department. Glad to be here. Excellent. Welcome to Positively Vermont. And before we get into the, the uh, events, tell us a little bit about, if you would, the village or the town or the area of Essex Junction, Vermont, where it's located. Uh, this program goes at various parts of the state and maybe a little bit of the history and geography and points of interest. Sure. Well, Essex Junction is located in Chittenden County, north central Chittenden County. We have about 10,000 residents in just under six square miles, so it's a very compact village. We have a famous intersection called Five Corners, where five major routes intersect, and that is going to be the heart of where this event is. And tell us about the little railroad uh, background to the, to the place. Sure, well we do have the busiest train station in the state of Vermont uh, in Essex Junction and railroad has always been a significant part of our history. So it seemed like a natural choice to bring in trains and the concept of a train hop and let's be honest, who doesn't love a train? And uh, the, the place has been known as a major uh, over the course of possibly 150 years, uh, yes. uh, an intersection for all the, when railroads mm -hmm. were very, very big, uh, a great uh, hub, I guess, for Vermont. That's how we got the name Essex Junction. That's great. That's fantastic. Well, before we get into details, tell us a little bit about yourself, Darby. If you sure. Uh, my name is Darby Mayville. I've been working for the village for a little over six years now. Uh, I live in Essex with my husband and my son, and I came to Vermont by way of Connecticut because I wanted to go to the to UVM, and I met my husband there, and here we are. That's great. Well, Kirsten, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, um, I am new to the Chittenden County area, but I did grow up in Rochester, Vermont, so familiar with Vermont as a whole. Um, and I lived over in upstate New York for quite a while uh, with my fiance at the time, and then we just got married and, and came back over. So I've been working for Essex Junction Rec and Parks for just over a year and a half now, and I love being back in Vermont. That's great. We have various uh, departments uh, working on this. Uh, uh, and I understand uh, there's a number of volunteers uh, we uh, are going to uh, hear about. And uh, uh, working with you is a John Gorecki. Uh, yes. Tell us about John. So John has been with the train hop since its inception. John is a model train aficionado. He works year round constructing tracks, working on different trains and making sure that each location has the perfect model train. In fact, a couple of years back, I brought him this old train set from the 1930s that needed a lot of TLC and he worked on it dedicatedly for a few months and it was been running at the train hop ever since. That's great. Well, this is going to be December the 8th, uh, and uh, it, it's a, going to take starting at 6 o'clock, I take it. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's going to happen on December the 8th? Tell us all the events uh, that's going to happen and where. So the first thing that's going to kind of kick off the evening is the tree lighting, village tree lighting, which will happen around 6, 6.15. Um, and that'll be, right, like Darby said, right in five corners. Um, and then right at 6, uh, all of these businesses that are hosting uh, model trains will also be opening. So from 6 to 8, you can kind of go to different businesses that are participating both on Main Street and Railroad Ave um, and visit them and see their model train. Hopefully everyone will have a model train on display, both that, some that we provide and then some get really into it and provide their own. Um, there'll be a little goodie to, to take home, tr train or holiday related. Um, and then hopefully some cookies or some different um, drinks, hot chocolates, that kind of thing. Just a really festive holiday type mood. We'll also be uh, expanding the Maple Street Park uh, performance because we have the, the trees lighting in the park, um, which is the whole park lit up with different 
um, different trees lit up and then also the Christmas music will be playing and we'll have a trackless train running through the park that you can ride on. And there'll be a trolley that takes people from the downtown center five corners to the park and then back again. So you don't even have to worry about parking at either place. You can just catch the trolley. That's great. And the, the lights in the park are absolutely amazing. I went last year and I was floored by how beautiful it was. And they are not a one night only thing. They are they happen from the day after Thanksgiving until January 1st. So those will be available all season. Now the tree itself is, is located where? Uh, we have two, we, the, so the lighting will be right at the Five Corners area. Is that where the veterans uh, place is? Uh, yep, yeah, right in that area and the front lawn of Lincoln Hall. Okay, that's great. And there's going to be any uh, singing or anything going on with that? Or? Yep, there should be some school choruses uh, leading a song and of course Santa will be there. Oh, that's great. And each person, the, 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 there's like a little ticket that they get. Tell us how that works. Yes, yeah, so there'll be a train map and ticket kind of combined into one. So it'll show what businesses are participating and have a spot where you can collect a stamp from each of the different participating businesses or organizations. Um, and then they'll also, we'll have some information on what each business is, is doing, what train is there maybe. Um, and just gonna give you an overview of what the layout is because at six o'clock on a December Friday, it's gonna be a little dark. So yeah. we wanna give a, an idea of what's happening um, as best we can so people can take full advantage of it. Are they gonna go in a group or people can just go uh, individually to different locations? I my Last year was my first time experience at the train hop and I did see a lot of family groups going together, but maybe Debbie. Yeah, however you'd like to do it is fine. Uh, you know, it is more fun with a group, but I think that one or two people on their own would have a great time anyway. Mm -hmm. Tell us about these conductors. Sure. So it's a volunteer position. We've had, we've had state reps. We've had village trustees. You'll see them wearing their big hats, and they're there to greet people, provide information, stamp tickets, just generally be hosts and hostesses of our event. That's great. And, and what about uh, music uh, for this? There's going to be any musical performances while this goes on? Um, I would guess that each individual business will be having some kind of holiday themed music. Um, I know we do at the park, but otherwise there's not a specific spot where, where mm -hmm. people are performing, but anybody's welcome to bring in, come in and, and be, have performers at their spot. So I understand this year you have a, a new trolley, another trolley, an additional trolley? Tell yes. Tell us about that. We have an additional trackless railroad, which is something that uh, you can ride on as a family. So um, it's a little motor in the front and they go around various parts. They'll have a route. So there's going to be one um, near the fire station right in downtown and then also one at the park going through on the pathways, as long as there's not too much snow, um, through the lighted trees. It's going to be weather permitting, I take it. The event itself will happen weather regardless. Mm -hmm. um, we have found obviously better participation with uh, better weather, Overdays. but uh, overall it will happen even if it is snowing and it's honestly a lot, I think it's kind of more fun if it's I snowing. Do yeah. too. It adds it's something. Great atmosphere. The, whole, yes. the whole place is just starting to get a great buzz on for this. You know, the, mm -hmm. the posters are out. It's a very nice poster, uh, very nice designs. Thank you. Um, uh, tell us about what types of businesses, if you know what any of the businesses are going to be doing uh, at this point. It's kind of about two weeks away, but if you know any specific businesses that are going to be doing something special, are there specials involved with this or discounts or things of that nature? Yeah, we definitely encourage businesses to provide some kind of discount, whether it's a food type thing. We have a few restaurant partners and then some local organizations and then it's just some of the businesses that line those particular roads. Um, it's We're not looking for a specific type of business. It's really just locale. So making sure that you're within the, the five corners area. Um, but I know Darby has a better handle on which trains go where because there are some specific trains that are really popular mm -hmm. that go to different businesses. So. Tell us about that, Darby. Sure. We have had some trains that have really grown with the location. For example, we have a local lawyer's office who's participated for many years, and every single year they have the John Deere train in their location, and they love that train. They decorate it, they do all kinds of things with that, and that's their train. So it's really wonderful to see certain locations really hitch on to different trains. And I know you were asking about specials. In the past, we don't want to give away things too early, but in the past we have had specials at many different village businesses 
businesses, for example, Nepali Kitchen, Essex Grill, have always offered pretty significant discounts for train hoppers. So that may be another reason to come by and have some dinner. And, and after, after the thing as well. Yes, exactly. Well, what law firm is doing that? Unsworth and Unsworth and Barra, I believe, is the right, name. Right, they're right near the uh, yep. railroad itself. Exactly, right across the street from the station. That's a very exciting area of Christmas time. I know there's one Amtrak train mm -hmm. comes in uh, at night, and it's, it's kind of exciting when that comes in, you know. But uh, um, th that uh, the railroad itself uh, is it going. I noticed there's a little bit of an exhibit there uh, at the station. Uh, is anything going to be happening there at this point? As far as the Glaston area, that actually used to have an ATM in it, and right now it's used as an access area for storage. Mm -hmm. So are they... I did see a little yeah. uh, track set up, or well, maybe I'm imagining it, because <laughs> it's kind of brilliant. The world of imagination, when you hear that whistle blow and all those mm -hmm. people get off at night and the snow's going down, it's fantastic. It yeah. is. And what about participation by schools? Anything going on with the schools? Nothing specific. Um, most of the people that we see coming through are local families um, that are, have lots of kids in, in the schools and we'll be doing a special flyer home with school kids to promote um, with the families because it really is, it is a family winter event that we're just trying to provide an opportunity for people to come out and celebrate community, both good for themselves and uh, good for the businesses. So, Now, organizing this, how many people are involved right now in this? <laughs> well, kind of one at a time. Darby was really mm -hmm. the head honcho for the past couple of years, um, and she's helping me pick up the pieces now. Um, and it's really just a mostly a one one woman show. So you need volunteers. <laughs> yes, volunteers are great to have. Um, most of the businesses have been really wonderful about stepping up and and wanting to provide their own volunteers or conductors, as we call them in this case. Um, but we are definitely looking for for more people too. If anybody's interested in volunteering. That's great. It uh, sounds like a really a wonderful opportunity. And when is Santa going to arrive? Santa should arrive at 6 o'clock, and he'll be hanging out until 8 o'clock. So get your wishes in. That's great. And we'll be available for visits, or we'll just be walking around. Certainly, um, but there does get to be a long line. Really? Yes, but Where? he's a patient man. <laughs> Where is he going to be? He'll be upstairs in the teen center. Oh, okay, that's great. And, and that's near the fire station? Yeah, so that's right next door to the fire station. And actually, speaking of the fire station, Santa is going to be at the fire station the weekend before on December 2nd. So he's going to arrive by fire truck at 10 a.m. that morning, in case anyone's interested in seeing him again. That's great. Well, tell us about last year. How was it last year? How many people participated? You, you know, it's always difficult to tell, Dennis, because there's not really any one way of counting people. I'd estimate somewhere between 1,000 and 3,000. Last year was bitter cold. Um, the year before that was beautiful. Uh, it was probably 50s, 60s, and we had probably closer to 3,000 people that year. Wow. So it's really weather dependent, but you know, it's a great time either way. It, sound, it yeah. sounds that way. And uh, it, it sounds like it's a tremendous, uh, just atmospheric type of thing. That's why, you know, this, this show gets uh, around in various parts of, uh, you know, the state. And uh, so uh, if anybody watches it, uh, we're going to post the information about the town and, and uh, where to get some information about the, uh, the train hop. And, uh, and fortunately, it's uh, early enough that they can get some more information about it. Exactly. And, and I guess, uh, um, how many people uh, were, were like uh, involved in, in uh, the initial ones over the years? Just, just uh, whose idea was this? So this idea was brought up by a group of community volunteers. Oh, I'm thinking nine years ago, possibly mm -hmm. even ten. And they saw that Essex Junction, there were a lot of vacant storefronts, um, an increase in crime. Things were really not going as well as they are now. So there were people who were working to get people into Essex Junction and really get people out at night. So that was the vision for the original train hop. So there's been a lot of, I know there's some other groups in, in, in the town mm -hmm. working on, on, on those aspects. So there's a lot of coordination with that. Oh, definitely. And it's, and it's a good uh, a chance to, to get everybody involved at a, at a very festive time. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and the tourism potential is, is very interesting, too. All the, all the stuff you can see there and, uh, and that uh, 
sort of a way, a way station to Canada and parts of New York and, uh, and other places like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always interesting to read when people post on the Facebook pages to see where they're from. People seem to, I noticed people were coming from Rutland, from Highgate, really all over the place last year. And you have a Facebook page. We're going to post that. Yep. And uh, there's information about that, and people can also uh, volunteer and, and uh, uh, contribute that way, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yep. That's great. And uh, other than volunteers, is there any type of uh, support that's going on for this, or is this a function of the, of the, you know, the, the town and village? Anybody contributions or anything like that? How does that work? It's more of a participation-based contribution, I would say. So we're happy to have lots of places con um, contribute their time and opening their doors maybe at a time when they wouldn't necessarily have been open. Um, that's really the biggest contribution for us, I would say. And there are some new businesses in, in the last year I've mm -hmm. seen opening up there. So this is going to be a great opportunity for them, for them to, to show their stuff. Exactly. Get some people in there, see what they're made of. Mm -hmm. Now, um, we're, this is going to be a few weeks away. Is, is there any, if there are businesses, there are people who want to uh, somehow network with this, uh, is, is there going to be time and space still available for this? Yeah, um, we're trying to be pretty flexible and, and keep it open to whoever wants to participate. So if there's somebody that wants to participate, a business or organization that feels like they're ready to go, um, we're happy to entertain that and figure out a space for them to be in, or if they're able to open their own space, that's great too. Um, it is not limited to having a physical storefront, which is the great part. Um, I don't know if that's something you implemented or not, but um, there are some organizations that are coming in that are, that are you know, such as Sun Common and, and VSAC, and they're coming in and they're going to have just a space um, to present some stuff, but they're community partners that so definitely fits within our whole theme. And there's going to be like a kiosk of uh, groups in any one particular area, or is it just where they can set it up? Um, we've typically had them set up in the town offices, right? Yep, right, or the village offices, the village right, office, at sorry. Lincoln Street. <laughs> are they, are they going to be, uh, the offices going to be open too as well? Yeah, well, they won't be open for, you know, water payments and things like that, yeah. but they will be opening their doors. That's great. Um, that is fantastic. Um, so it's going to be a very, uh, what about uh, uh, the, the police department? Are they doing anything special? Well, the police are going to be there to ensure safety, uh, but they're just a little too far to be walkable. Right. And the, this, this uh, if, if you wanted to cover the whole thing, how, how, how much uh, territory is, is going to be embraced from the, from the edge of it to the, to the uh, end of it? Probably about four blocks or so. It's not terribly big. Um, the biggest trek out would be to Maple Street Park. Um, and again, there is a, tr a tr few trolley that takes you back and forth. Um, so yeah, four blocks probably walking distance, and then uh, you can also take the trolley and go walk around the park, so maybe a little bit more. But That's great. It's as much or as little as you want to do, which is nice. <laughs> really, really. Uh, anything going on at the library? Oh, yes. Tell us about the library. <laughs> the Brownell Library. So Brownell Library has really been the focal point of this event. Brownell Library, I've been in there some years where I've had trouble getting through that door. It is packed. They have goodies. They've had, in the past, a Lego train. They had a cake train last year, which was fabulous, but not too many people saw it because it got eaten so quickly. So Brownell has really been the hub of activities for the train hop. I think uh, you were asking, how did they find out about this? It, w it was posted in the library. I think they might have had a little uh, exhibit. Uh, they have little train exhibits once in a while there, too. Yep, and they put down a masking tape train, too, to show people where to go through and to generate excitement before the train hop. That's great. And that's the Brownell Library. That's which correct. Which is uh, right across uh, the street from the, uh, the, the train station or the bus station. Mm -hmm. Or it's right next door to the village offices. Exactly. Okay. I'm just, I, I'm there every day and I just can't remember <laughs> <laughs> giving verbally, you know, oh, it's that place there. You know? that, that is fantastic. A any other community uh, um, established organizations, you have the parks, you have the police, you have the fire, any, any, any other, um, any hospitals, anything like that, getting involved? I, I know, again, it's early, you're probably going to get mm -hmm. people, once they see this, additional volunteering. Mm -hmm. um, Essex Chips is pretty well involved. I'm trying to think of other good partner organizations. 
Library is huge. <laughs> yes, they're massive. Uh, like Kirsten was saying, we've had a number of community partners come out to have kiosks. I know last year we had United Way, YWCA, Sun Common. So we really have really done a really good job of bringing in different aspects of the community to this event. That's great. Uh, was there like a ticket booth somewhere? Uh, I, something like that. I, I remember that from last year's, uh, like a little booth. We did have an info booth set up, yes. Is that going to be happening again? Yes, and that'll be right on the Brownell Library, so kind of central to the hub right, of things. Right out front where the little lawn is, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And which is right near the bus station. Exactly, uh, so nice and easy. You don't it's, even have to it's, drive. It's <laughs> like the easiest place to get to, probably. Mm -hmm. And you can even walk to it if you want. It's just uh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, this really is, uh, sounds exciting. It's going to be on December the 8th. And uh, I'd just like to give uh, each of you an opportunity to sum up and address uh, our viewers uh, uh, about the event or uh, just anything you'd like to say in closing. Yeah. All right. So this event is a lot of fun. And what I'd really like to tell people is to make sure that they come out rain or shine. No matter what, you'll have a great time. And there's always new things every single year. So even if you've been last year, it'll be just a little bit different and just a little more exciting for you this year. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Kirsten. I'd like to take a minute to describe the event as it was described to me that, I, that really resonated with me. Um, someone described it as something that you would have seen when there was more department stores and everybody had this really festive holiday um, decorations in their storefront window and you would see the kids' faces pressed against the glass watching that model train. We're trying to recreate that feeling. So if you resonate with that, um, definitely come by and, and see the different model trains, um, get some goodies and have a good time. That sounds really great. You know, that's, that's a very good description mm -hmm. of it. Well, this has been uh, Dennis McMahon with uh, Darby uh, Mayville and Kirsten Santor uh, talking about the Essex Junction train hop and tree lighting coming up in beautiful Essex Junction, Vermont. Thank you for watching Positively Vermont.